I'm here to talk about uh, reducing our footprint. They called it going green, um, and I want to change that name a little bit. I thought it was interesting. Like, first, I think it was Johanna reached out to me to speak a few months ago. I was like, first off, it was, wow, low barriers to entry to be a speaker here. And <laughs> two, I thought they were going to come at it from like a course operation or something. That's my, my strength of my background. I worked for Spectrum Sports when I left the military. And uh, let's see, I'll just go to the next slide and kind of, boom. So who am I? Um, I used to serve. I graduated from the Air Force Academy in 2011. I did uh, contracting for the US Air Force. Realized I did not like that really quickly. Um, and it wasn't my calling. My father was a runner. I ran um, my whole life, and I wanted to get into running. So I went and got my master's at Xavier in sports admin. Met Iris on Flying Pig. I interned there, interned with Darius at the Columbus Marathon, uh, Ironman Florida. Went to running USA Savannah and was like first opportunity to punch I did and got into uh, working in Inside West for Spectrum Sports. Our clients were Run Disney, Anaheim Angels, Catalina Island Marathon, Eco Marathon. So I was doing like 20 races uh, out there. So my background is heavy in operations. And when I started my own company, I was humbled very quickly because I thought, I work for Run Disney, I can produce some little 5Ks. I got this. Yeah, I, I, this is easy. And then I realized like, Oh my god, I don't know how to do registration, marketing, sponsorship, volunteer management. Like I know how to design really good courses and certify them perfectly. So if you ever need that, I'm your man. And I thought that's what I was gonna be here today speaking. They're like, speak about going green. And I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm the right person. The more I thought about it, I was like, maybe I am. As you can see, the person I was is no longer. Um, this is me at Lightning in a Bottle. It's a big 35,000 person hippie festival in the middle of nowhere, California. And back to back years, I won their 5K and I won a bucket of compost. Um, <laughs> <laughs> compost that qualifies. Yeah, so for I was like looking for a picture for this and I was like, I was thinking of one when I was hiking the JMT. I was like, oh, that would be great. That shows me I'm a hippie now. And I live in Yellow Springs now, which is a hippie commune pretty much in Ohio. And I was like, no, this is the best one. Is that um, you on the left or the right? <laughs> I'm on the right. Oh, That's, um, <laughs> <laughs> that was when she was promoting me to lieutenant, first lieutenant. Um, so my kind of journey into, uh, I don't like the term going green, and I, I get into this because we talk about greenwashing. Events aren't green. You're never going to be a green event. Like the inherent nature of saying, hey, let's bring hundreds or thousands of people to this one location, all drive here, and producing event is not green. Like there's that. So that's like inherently what greenwashing is. It's like coming out and saying, so I'll read, greenwashing is the practice of making an unsubstantiated or misleading claim about the environmental benefits of a product, service, technology, or company practice. Greenwashing can make a company appear to be more environmentally friendly than it really is. When you use environmental images, when you have misleading labels, hidden trade-offs, Irrelevant claims that have nothing to do about uh, being green or the lesser of two evils. Sorry, it was not compressed over the bottom there when I built it. Don't know what happened. The lesser of two evils example that would be like, oh, organic cigarettes. Like, <laughs> so we're never going to be green. So I don't like to use that that terminology. And that's why I made it reducing our footprint. But I started kind of when I went to the U.S. Trail Running Conference a few years ago, and I was working the Catalina Island races. Thought we can go couples. Like, we're a travel marathon, we can do this. And so we started out with the Island Marathon, and then we made the Eco Marathon Coupless, and then the Avalon 50 Miler 50K Coupless. And we made work with Hydro Pack, and every runner who signed up, they got the little, that's the collapsible cup, they carried it. I never thought about it as going green, it's just like, yeah, everything has to be shipped to Catalina, and then there's no such thing as like a landfill in Catalina. Everything is literally shipped back to the mainland. So, I was like, that's 20,000 less cups. Well, I don't have to buy, and we don't have to like ship back. That's a huge footprint. And so, again, I never thought I was doing anything particularly awesome. I didn't think about being green, and I was just trying to do less, and trying to be less wasteful. And so, then I started my own company, and I realized I want to start this from the beginning, because the earlier you start trying to think of reducing your footprint, the easier it is. At Air Force right now, we're backtracking over 23 years because it was never a concern for us. And that's now hard to take a 13,000 person event and say, well, how do we make this like <clears throat> less of an impact? 
And uh, so that's what we're going to get to talk about. This is like really high level. It's, it's not like crazy in the weeds because you can go so deep into like so many of these topics. Um, especially if you, I'll, I'll talk later about the Council for Responsible Sport. Like if you start going down those rabbit holes, like you better hire someone like full time for that. Like you can get really deep. So before the race is the bulk of reducing your foot. Like, if you're not planning for it a long time in advance, don't think you're going to show up on race day and be like, oh, yeah, we're going to recycle the plastic. Like, it's not going to happen because it's probably the last thing you care about. Like, it's just not a concern. So everything I do, I always try to think about going local from the very beginning. And that's, like, one of the best ways you can do it. Like, I always try to use local sponsors if I can, uh, local vendors if I can. Like, for example, um, and I'll have a referral list of some vendors I use for various topics, but I'm based out of Dayton, Ohio. When I wanted a finish line arch made, yeah, it's super easy to just take some promo company and get something that's made out of China and have it shipped here. Or I met Matt from Inflatable Images based out of New Brunswick, Ohio, and I was like, this is cool because now I can keep my money here. And community can be different things. Community can be the city you're in, it can be the state you're in, it can be the country you're in, depending on. Uh, the scale of what you're talking about. Yeah, it's unlikely in Yellow Springs, Ohio, I can find someone who makes inflatable arches. So New Brunswick, Ohio was like the next best thing for me. And so that's where my arch came from. And I, it didn't have to be shipped. I was actually on my way to Cleveland Marathon and I picked it up. And so small way of reducing my footprint there. So choosing vendors like that, there's a, a company in Dayton that sells uh, um, compostable cups, compostable plates. I use them. Yeah, I know they're bringing them in from elsewhere, but then if I wasn't using them, I would have to order from a company who brought them elsewhere and it's reshipped again. So I'm trying to always minimize my impact like that. Marketing locally, like, I don't know how many of y'all do this, depends on the size of your race, like just blanket printing flyers and like flyering cars. It seems to be like an old school technique. I don't see it as much at races. I don't do that very often. Um, tchotchkes, do you know what tchotchkes are? use this word all the time, uh, it's just trinkets. They're just useless trinkets. And they, the, the place where you see tchotchkes the most is expos. People love giving away tchotchkes, and runners love taking them, and they're just going to end up in the trash. Like, so we try to at least, uh, like say at Air Force, use really useful ones that don't get thrown away. Uh, my favorite one is the keychain. A lot of people, when it has their date on it, it can be once someone puts on their keychain, it lasts forever. But making sure they're not like, if you are going to use tchotchkes, don't have them individually wrapped in plastic. That is like the absolute, I'll never understand why everything has to be individually wrapped in plastic. That's like China's favorite thing to do. Um, so we try to minimize our use of those and try to be a little bit more green with a marketing like that. Then you get into like community. So a lot of people think of like reducing our footprint and they think of or like going green, they think just environmental impacts. There's like a whole socio, social side of like reducing your footprint and being a community partner in like helping your community. And that's why you can go down the rabbit holes of offering youth programs, getting involved in your schools, charity involvement. I'm sure many of y'all are charities or work with charities, but that's a whole side of reducing your footprint and supporting your community through various means and keeping your money right there in your community. One of my favorite uh, images I saw is like, um, shop local because Amazon won't support your kid's sports team. And I take that to heart. A lot of us are like super small businesses. And so working within your community is also part of reducing your footprint. Keeping your dollars in your community and making sure it's not just leaving um, is very important. And now in terms of the pre-event planning, we'll talk quickly about supplies. Um, shirts, I don't know, again, some of these companies, they just individually wrap every shirt in plastic and Air Force would place a 20,000 shirt order. That is like insane to think about. Metals, Luke is here. Luke, where's he at? Right here. How, did, how do I feel about individually, individually wrapped metals? Uh, you look like, uh, at them bundle wrap with Thank plastic. You. Thank you. And I like one time, I, Luke conveyed it and they messed up and I like almost had a meltdown. I was like, how could this happen? And I, it was a total accident and they definitely you know, fix that. By the way, Luke's the man. Uh, Ash Rewards is awesome. So that's another one. You don't need medals individually wrapped. It's just not important. They can bundle them in like groups of 10. If they're like the tiniest scratch, the runners can get over it. Um, 
cups, plates, those can all be compostable. Um, then bags, like in, say, who has a larger race where you do security screening? So we do that at Air Force. Everything has to be in the clear bag. It has you got to go through security screener. There's no such thing as like a hundred percent recyclable plastic clear bag that's biodegradable. It's just not a thing. So the company we use, it's very they they're not hiding. It's fifty one percent biodegradable. And they're like that's the best we can do. And so that's what we pay more for. We get fifty one percent biodegradable, sir. What does that mean, fifty one percent biodegradable? Like over, so there's very they, they have the asterisk on it. They explain under these conditions over time, fifty one percent of that bag will break down. So it's the best they can do. So yeah, it's it's not ideal, but we have to have those clear bags. I cannot get around that rule in the Air Force Marathon. Uh, that so bag is for what? That's for clear security. It's the security. So if anyone wants to come, check a bag, bring a bag, it's got to be in those bags. Oh, okay. We offer those to runners. Uh, so it's what we do. Another one, this was interesting. I have a running group I'm really close with, and I say, what does you know, being reducing your footprint mean to you all as a participant? What would you want to see out of races? And they said, I want to opt out. I want to opt out of shirts. I want to opt out of medals. It's just stuff I don't need. It. Perhaps the average runner who doesn't run as much once that stuff, but like me, if I go to a race, I mean, I said Beta Breakers, fantastic race, awesome. The pink gorilla shirt went into the pile with Goodwill. Like, I'm just gonna get rid of it. So they said, make the ability to opt out on shirts and belts. And you can price that in there. Run Sign has all that ability to do it. No shirts minus $5 at my race. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there you go. And you can make it to where it's still a profitable model for you. Like, I wanna offer that next year, I have a sponsor who pays for my shirt, and I guarantee you I'll find a way to offer that to where I'm ordering less and making more. I am a for-profit entity, I haven't gotten to make a profit yet, we'll be there. <laughs> Do you have any great uh, suggestions on, if people opt out of a shirt, it's easy enough to not get the shirt because it'll stay on their bib or whatever, their label, no shirt. A medal, if you've got volunteers handing out medals. I was about to say the bib option again, yeah. like if they have a tear tag is an option, or if it's like, if you, it depends how long out you order your medals, but, or yeah, sorry, order out your bibs. But that's what I was gonna say is the bib. The bib option just seems to be the cleanest. Like so, if, but if you have like magnetic bib assignment, you know, like you're saying like a yeah. like you tear off the something off the bib. Yeah, so you, know, uh, you typically have a lot of bibs depending on how crazy you want your bib. You know, like say like there's drink tabs from like a drink or a shirt tab. I've seen races have like so many different tabs, taco tabs, whatever you have. It would yeah. just be another one of that tab. Okay. Um, that I think is probably the simplest. Um, and I, I like I said, I'm by no means an expert. I can always point people in the directions here. Person who is really good with that is I'm name dropping Phil Stewart, uh, Cherry Blossom 10 miler. Everything I ever heard about it, it's a great race, but it's very a la carte. It's much like the Spirit Airlines model of racing. You pay for your race entry, anything you want after that's additional. So I know he charges for shirts, he charges for medals, he charges for everything. So Phil Stewart, he also wrote a great book. It's got like, what is it? Who's read it? Like the great How to Produce Race Events. It's like 500 pages. Highly recommended. It is incredibly thorough. Trash, recyclables, and compostables. You have to decide how you're going to do that a long time in advance. I'll talk about it more on, uh, on the next slide. Uh, if you have big exposed vendor standards are really important again because then you get back into the tchotchkes, the plastic wrap. Uh, the ex the really good example of this one would be Flying Pig, Denise over there at the pig. They have a very green expo. They have a set of standards. They email to all the vendors. If there's if the vendor meets that and notifies them and sends it in, they'll give them like a sign to put like, hey, we're a green vendor, we we're meeting these standards. Um, so that's something to consider. And like like Air Force, so when we to our huge event trying to go back and undo 20 years worth. We're breaking our event into segments, and this year we said we are just focusing on the start finish line venue. We want to make this area have a reduced footprint. Next year, year two is our course, year three is our expo. So you can't just attack all these at once. It's a, it's a big animal, so you gotta pick and choose. Lastly, transportation. Uh, encourage pedestrian traffic like in some of the races we used to when we produced like the redondo beach super bowl 5k 10k uh crowded obviously not a ton of parking we made a secure bike area so people could bring their bikes and then they could securely leave their bike there one last car we have to deal with in the area better for the environment encourage carpooling busing 
I saw a really good one. A woman who produces a hack in Germany just sent me this. And I don't know how they fully did it, but essentially your grace entry got you a free train ticket. And obviously the train network in most of Europe is far more advanced. But something like an obscene percentage of their participants took them up on that and then took the train um, down to the race and then left via the train, which I thought was incredible given that that race is like tens and tens of thousands and a half marathon. Um, so be creative with your transportation options. So on race day, this is the one I think you asked about this, and I'll give two ways to do this, smaller and larger. So the first one, um, let me talk about the clear stream recycling bins, which are actually pictured. And these are really cool. Uh, I think it's a company based out of Illinois, and you purchase them, they're different colors. So there's green, blue, and black. They have different lids, and they have little signs you can put on the top, because then I've heard people go, well, how will people know which one goes in which? That's why they make these little holders so that you can put signs in so it's very clear which goes in which, because I don't have the volunteer manpower to sit there over each one and go, no, no, but it goes in here. Um, that's not feasible. So this is a great solution. They, even if you can see the bags, like the blue bag has the recycling logo, the black bag says like trash, 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 like so they can't, I mean, they'll still mess it up because they're runners. Um, but you can lead the horse to water really well that way. And there's a lot of cool programs. Like I'm in Green County, Ohio. I bought two sets of these and they're not cheap. And then I found out Green County Recycling is like, oh, we've got like 50 sets that you can like rip for free for your events. Like we want people to use these at our events. So look into your resources of your like local county recycling programs. Uh, like we also have Five Rivers Metro Parks, who has a lot of knowledge in recycling and offers free classes on that. Um, trash stations with volunteers. This is what we're doing at Air Force. This is a, I think, an effective solution at larger events, but it definitely takes some groundwork here. So what we're doing is we have no trash cans at our start and finish line, meaning the whole area where all the thousands of runners and spectators are. Instead, we're putting big banners that have trash, compost, recycling with all the descriptions of each. And then there'll be tables with trained volunteers and there'll be colors of bins. And so people will come and they will set their stuff down. The volunteers will sort it right there on site. That is a labor intensive process. It takes a lot of training in advance. So our green coordinator at Air Force is going through the local Metro Parks recycling program. So she's incredibly knowledgeable. She'll pass that out. So the volunteer lead to be a training, and then on race day, that's how we're going to execute it. We will see how that goes. Now, waste diversion, as you get into later, I get, I'll talk about Council for Responsible Sport. They want you to measure your waste diversion. So we've always just had like the big rocky truck shows up, waste management, whatever, toss the trash in, she's gone. This year, or actually, we've just been doing the 40 yard roll offs. This year, we said we need to measure this. We need to know how much we're diverting. So we're taking three empty waste management trucks. They will all weigh, weigh themselves before the event. Then they will come on site, and as the like the compost area fills up at one of the trash stations, that volunteer will walk the compost over to the one truck for compost, and walk the recyclables over. So that's very clearly sorted right there. Then those trucks can leave, go away again, and we can say we diverted 2,000 pounds of plastic. Again, that is an option that is probably not feasible for like events like mine, three, four hundred people, but if you do have like a larger event, um, that's an option. And that's a, the whole trash area is also a prime opportunity for sponsorship, especially with that push these days to reduce our footprint and like with those signs and stuff, you're you using something like that. It's a great branding opportunity to get a sponsor involved. Um, on the course, the squirt gels, gels are horrible. We on Catalina Island just banned them. Like, we did not offer gels, we did not encourage gels. We even ended up using uh, honey stingers, like wafers at our aid stations, we just like, cut them into like quarters and like pass them out. Um, because it's so awful, and uh, clip gels aren't my favorite by taste, but my favorite thing about it is that when you rip the tab off, it stays connected to the rest of the gel packet, which is like the tiniest little thing, but um, also, if you're a business owner, I highly recommend raising the bar by the founder. Um, so God bless them. So there's, you got to think about that because those things will stick to the ground. People rip the tops off. Um, I know, like in a marathon, you're probably just gonna suck it up and use them. But if you do have a smaller event, you can watch that our trail event. I recommend just scrapping them all together. 
going cupless isn't particularly feasible on large races, but like I said, with the, tra the trail community, the ultra community is very into that. It's very simple to do. I just volunteered at a 50 mile this weekend. Every runner carried their own cups. It's not hard to do. And then if you are going to use cups, compostable cups are an option. I mean, honestly, the per unit cost isn't that much higher as a percentage. And uh, I think they're always like corn-based cups. Like you're not supposed to leave in direct sunlight for hours, they'll melt. Um, so you can you stack them? Uh, I think so. I think there's definitely strong enough to be stacked, but I can't remember what material you use on top of like a layer of cups. Corn glass? Corn glass, something like that, yeah. Um, they should definitely be stacked. They're firm little cups, but like if you were to leave them like on a hundred degree day in the sun, they would lose more time. Um, so those are great options on the course. And then post race, local sourcing of food. This one's a big one for me. Like, um, like at my races, I always use Bill's Donuts. Like, why would I not use Bill's Donuts? One, because they're like always top three in the country. Like, legitimately, if you're ever in Dayton, Ohio, Bill's Donuts always rank top three. Um, so I use them. We use a lot of times. We use Mike sells potato chips. So one, again, you're getting into supporting local business, minimizing the extra footprint, shipping, um, individually wrapped items. Again, this is like my foot stomp. I hate individual. Uh, you can get away from that, like especially like if you're using like a local bakery or something like that to be super creative. Single-use plastics. This is the hardest. I'm super guilty. I use Gatorade water bottles, um, and I'm trying desperately to figure out the way I want to handle that going forward. And it's literally just buying nice bottles, and everyone finishes like, "Here's a bottle of man." We are looking into one of our local plumbers. We're in a smallish town in a larger area. Um, who's been our sponsor forever, and they are looking to build us one of those continual fountains. Fountains, yeah. They're inspired by Hartford. Hartford yeah. had the electric like, company make this like 40 person water fountain, and you just hook it up to a potable water source. So that's um, an option. Like, it's almost like you just think of like a tube and you just like poke holes in the tube. <laughs> all the way down. You just have like a spout coming out. It's similar to what they roll out for like football players on, on yeah. uh, you know, the field and stuff like that. So yeah. that's. Uh, the London Marathon did water pods? Yeah, so the water pods are like, I I definitely heard about this when they came out and they got like super viral and everyone shared them. They're like, they're awesome, but they're not at a level where like you can't just go buy them right now. Um, the, the company can't like manufacture like it's nearly enough right now. So I think it was almost like a bit of a publicity stunt to show that it can work, but they're definitely, they're just, you can't buy them. I've heard even people who got on the list and then they're like, oh, sorry, we can't make enough left. So I'd like to think that think that would become more of a thing. It seems really cool, but not there yet. So we're trying in general to reduce single-use plastics. It's just we have an over-reliance on single-use plastics um, as, an, as a country, as a world, but specifically at events. And I'm not there yet, but I'm trying to get there. It's hard because it's just easy to go to Costco and buy 500 water bottles. Enough. It's a lot harder to think of a solution that will be easier, will work, and get run into the water and not piss them off and be too much of an inconvenience. I always use compostable plates and cutlery. It's just super easy. Like I said, uh, it's more of a, a cost up front. But like, I'm just backing into my business. Like, this is how it's going to be. I'm not going to take a shortcut and go get like a plastic plate. Like, it just doesn't need to be that way. You don't have to shortcut everything. And I use Cliff a lot uh, when I, I mentioned sponsors. Cliff is not a local sponsor to me, but Cliff stands for everything I stand for. They never take shortcuts on their sourcing, the way they treat their employees. I know, like, if offered a job there and made sense for me, I'd be like, yeah, because I agree with everything you do. That's how I feel about composable plates and cutlery. It's like, I know it's the right thing to do, I'm just going to do it. So that's a really easy way to start. And then, like at a small race like mine, with the compostables, the banana peels, and the compostable plates, like, like what happens to them? Well, in my case, they go to my composter back home. Like, I always have a ton of banana peels in my composter. <laughs> uh, so, but like, you can work with your local uh, waste management companies and stuff like that. A lot of times, they'll take that stuff as long as it's properly sorted, which is why it's so important to make sure people get stuff in the right. We suffer right now a lot as a country because our recycling has too much mixed stuff in it and it's not high quality recycling. And so it's essentially just being incinerated, which defeats the whole purpose of it all. So it's very important that things are sorted correctly. That's why I think what we're doing in Air Force will be effective, but I know it takes a lot of groundwork to make that happen. After the race, reusing and donating uh, race shirts, 
I mean, obviously, like in my case, I said for like my small events, I actually keep registration open and just make it virtual, so I can just keep get rid of get rid of them over time. But like, I still have like a ton of medals from last year. I know Ashworth has a program; you can send them back. They'll give you some credit. Um, obviously, it's not even like fifty percent back, but it's always an option, and we should collaborate. Um, you can fit an obscene amount of medals into a box. And uh, my favorite thing to do is give to the local children's hospital. So, do you have a question? Just uh, about the old medals and old shirts. One of our franchisees, they do a recycle run, so you just take all the old shirts and old <laughs> medals. It's super, super cheap. You just pick whatever medal you want, you pick what shirt you want. And then it's not a bad idea. We're going to do the same thing this year. We're doing it the Saturday after Thanksgiving. It's the leftovers race. That's they a really, like, I like that a lot. It's Sir, worth my I was going to say, I think there's a metal recycler near me. I take the medals there. And they paint, they don't pay me very much. Yeah, it's like but, zinc probably or yeah, something they're looking yeah. for. Yeah. So I get like 40 bucks for a year of metal, but I'm yeah. actually getting. Like, yeah, it's still being yeah. recycled. We actually just did that in the Air Force because we had been like hoarding metals for like 10 years and it was like thousands of pounds. And we just gave it to the Air Force, the base recycling. We don't get any money for it. Um, but you can recycle like that. You can chip them back to like Ashworth if you're using Ashworth, donating them to children's hospitals. I've actually gotten to the point now too. Like after Indie Monumental, I set my hat mirror on the PR, and it was like such a good race, and medals for medals was there. I was like, no, I don't need this medal. This is the way that I cost for this medal. Food, you should always be donating that. Yeah, you can't, like, a happy eat label shirt, but if you have food, take a little bit of food banks and whatnot. Um, and then a, this was a really creative example. I'm really happy with this one. We do, we have a challenge at Air Force where you run 5K, 10K, and a half, or 5K, 10K full, and the 10K and a half full start an hour apart. So you have to do the 10K and an hour. And we always give them a challenge item. And this year we took the scrim fencing um, that lines our barricades for like hundreds, hundreds of feet. And we shipped it back to the manufacturer. It's Britain out of Michigan. And they're turning it into reusable tote bags. And, and then they're putting in like a little like descriptions like in my former life I saw many like joyous victories and stuff like that. And so we're going to have to buy something anyway, so why not pay for something that's reusing a product we already own and we're just going to throw in the trash. But we have to get rid of it every year anyway because sponsor will change. Um, so what that, that was that? what? what Britain. B-R-I-T-T-E-N. Um, so that one is like, I'm like super pumped on that. I think it's going to be super cool. And I'm like a total maybe I came out in California where you have to like pay for grocery bags, so I always use reusable shopping bags and no one in Ohio uses shopping bags I hate it afterwards it's like I said the, the pre-event planning the second an event ends your pre-event planning is needed again and so that's when you have to review what work and what day you should always be doing after action reports and you should be doing post-event surveys which are super easy to send out and you should be asking questions to your participants and they, they can be open-ended questions and you should be actually reading them like I essentially like I said I have a running group of like 15 friends and we are all on Facebook and it's funny, I'm the only event director in that group, and I bounce my ideas off my runners constantly. I send them my metal designs, my shirt designs, my awards, my thoughts on course design, and I'm always bouncing it off my participants because they're the ones who are serving. They're the ones who uh, pay us. So definitely be asking those questions to your participants. The road ahead, 1% improvements. This was an a idea I took when I was training for my one and only Iron Man. And the guy, and the author of the book, said like, if people would just focus on making 1% improvements, how much better could you be if you slept 1% more, if you ate 1% less, if you drank 1% more water, <coughs> like, if you were 1% nicer to people, like, whatever. Just think in life about 1% improvements. They're really easy to make. The problem is sometimes we're like, here, we're like, oh my god, I've got to get all the way over there. Like, I do this all the time in my running. I've been trying to break 15 minutes forever in the 5K. It seems like so far away. It's like, why don't I just like one percent of whatever amount, like okay, that's like five seconds, six seconds. I can, I can be one percent better. Product. How do I get there? Um, same thing here. It's like, how can I be one percent better? How can I create one percent less waste? That's not that much. Like, but if you do it again and again, suddenly it adds up over time. But it's a lot easier to focus on one percent than say twenty percent. So, um, one positive change. I do this after every race. I go, what's the one change I'm making between now and the next race. Like there has to be a change. Like there's you're, you have none of y'all in here ever have or ever will produce the perfect event. So what are you gonna do between now and the next race to get closer to that perfect event? And one of those changes should always be producing your footprint. And then again, 
off-season uh, off planning is super important. Um, it's super easy. My events are July through October. It's super easy to just sit on your ass in December and November and January and back yourself into a corner. And like I said, you back yourself in that corner, that, like, this will be one of the first things that gets chopped. So I don't know why it's like slightly cut off. I apologize. This is above and beyond. And I mentioned two things so the Council for Responsible Sport and 1% for the planning. Council for Responsible Sport is like next level sustainability. That is what we're doing right now at the Air Force Marathon. I learned about that when I was the US trail running conference a few years ago. It's expensive. It's a, uh, I think, I think we're spending, it's 4,000 every two years. And so they come up, they will like bring someone to our event to grade us. They work with them all the time. They have a massive rubric of how you score points. And they have four certification levels, just certified, silver, gold, and then like evergreen or something. And I mean, when you look at the events that are like evergreen, they are like class events. And when you look at even like the gold, like the Marine Corps Marathon shows up, Peach Tree, Flying Pig, some of the best events are on that list. And sometimes it's like NCAA Final Four events and stuff like that. So it's an investment. When I threw the idea out to my team, I was like, oh, I'll give this to the ancillary events manager. She does our pasta dinner, our expo. This will just fall under her. And we had no idea how much it would consume her. Um, it is seriously 50% of her job at this point. So if you go down that road, know that it's an endeavor. But I know our event is going to be a lot better for it. And again, that's when you, you transcend just going green in terms of recyclables. There's a lot of social and community involvement that they're looking for. So highly recommend. Then one percent of the planet was started by I think it's Yvonne Chouinard, who is the founder of Patagonia, and uh, I think it was a rock climber. The two of them decided to like start one percent of the planet. It's essentially when you dedicate one percent of your revenues and donate it to them, and they have tons of initiatives that help the planet. Essentially, the the idea of one percent of the planet is that we are only successful because we take resources from the planet. So why aren't we giving back? And I mean, I mean told the family of Patagonia, like, the white singer. So I haven't gone there as a business, but it's, because I, I mean, like I said, I've never looked at profit yet, but it is high on my radar. And then they have things where you can, like, okay, to offset some of the, perhaps, monetary donation, you can give in-kind donations depending on your business and service levels. So something to consider. Some referrals here. Uh, there's Council for Responsible Support, very easy, .org, formersofplanet.org. Uh, inflatable images, I love their handmade in on Like I went to their factory and like the big good year blend and stuff, that's like all like handmade by one person, just one stitch at a time. It's incredible. Um, Elevation Culture is one of my favorites. Uh, Eric Christman, who's ever used Elevation Culture? Love it. Uh, met him when I lived in uh, LA, he's out of San Diego. Uh, he's all about making awards cool again. And all handmade wooden awards here in America. And that's a big thing for me um, to, to use him and support him. And so he does all of my like age group awards and stuff like that, overall awards. And runners absolutely love him. Like, I think my average age group award comes in at about $5 a unit, but he goes all the way up to like 50 a unit, depending on what you want. So he's doing actually all of our overalls and Air Force this year, and there's like gorgeous custom wooden awards. He is a master of woodwork. Um, Leslie Jordan. Um, we talked about, I just got off the phone with her last week, because she saw my post, somebody on my saw a post on the race director's hub, and she saw my post, and we talked about the green washing. She was a few years ago when green was becoming a thing, like some green apparel companies came out, and Leslie, one thing I love about her is the quality control. She immediately started digging into these factories in China and was like, like explain to me these recycled polys. And they're like, oh, these aren't recycled polys. We're just putting that on the label and stitching it in because that's what the customer wants and the, the end user will never know. And she was like absolutely horrified. And so tons of greenwashing going on in the industry. And I, when I jumped on the phone with her the other day, she said, we are like weeks away from announcing an actual recycled poly shirt. And it like looks the same, feels the same. And I said, well, here's the key question, Leslie, is how much is it going to be more? And I was actually shocked to about 20% a unit. So I understand the is about $5 and $6, which I thought, again, for me, this is just what I consider the cost of doing business. And uh, if that's the product I want, then I'm going to go get it. And she offers that. If you don't work with her and you're looking for a shirt vendor, let's do it. It's awesome. And then Ashworth Awards, um, based here out of Massachusetts, um, 
awesome uh, Luke back there, and he didn't pay me to plug him. Uh, he's like family at this point. Uh, bumped into him on my honeymoon of all places, so can't escape him. And they have a ton of Made in America metal options. So um, this this is an on all inclusive list. These are just some of the ones that I've used, I work with, and I'm familiar with. And maybe it's for you. It's using you know, local to your community in dual awards or something for you. Like I'm looking to have my business uh, made into a flag, so uh, like three by five flag that I can like wait. There's a local flag manufacturer thing like that makes sense for me to use it. So I don't know if there's anything else after that. Oh yeah, contact me. There you go. Uh, on Facebook, Instagram, Strava, I have a personal Strava, I have religious on Strava, even when I wrote my book, I'm always on there. I have a club, I have a cell phone, I have email. And the other email is not on there, but if you need it, I always separate advanced running the Air Force Marathon. I don't want a legal reading that way for it. Um, so I can give you my Air Force Marathon if you want. And if you want to do the Council for Responsible Sport thing, please email me and I can put you in touch with Rachel at the Air Force Marathon. She is very good at that. She's doing a great job. Can I answer anything for anyone? Ma'am? We do a really, 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 really hard time keeping the recycling from being contaminated. Yes. So what happens is, you know, we, we send out all kinds of information to tell people, um, you know, we put trash and recycling side by side, we have a trash dumpster, we have a recycling dumpster, and then and when everybody's gone and the dumpster guy comes in, I get a call the next day from my yes. guy and he goes, I have to charge for trash, you know, because recycling is free for us. Mm -hmm. So we get charged by the time for trash. But now all of it has become trash. Um, he's been really good to us and kind of weighed the fees. And it's not so much about the money, it's just the fact that we put all this effort into it and it's just from not. I think, I, I honestly think the route that Air Force is going is the way is to have someone directly, and I know it's manpower intensive, like it's not viable for me in advance running, especially because volunteer management is like core, I mean, I hate volunteer management. Um, but I think that's the best way, otherwise you're just going to be sitting there yourself sorting trash at the end. Because people just, like I always joke, yeah, you can leave the horse to the water, you can shove his face in it too, and they just won't drink. Like, it's just the nature of it. And a lot of it too, too, is just, they just, Ignorant of it. But I, I like what you said too, I mentioned earlier, is when it as it comes to sponsors and vendors and participants, this needs to be like a year round marketing message. You can't just on race day say, oh, by the way, we're green or we're reducing our footprint. It needs to be in your marketing and in your communications to, to everyone, participants, vendors, sponsors, and this is part of who you are. Yeah. Um, for the race stations with volunteers, can you, like, I work in an environmental institution and we struggle with getting volunteers. Um, to want to sort trash. I think, yeah. so <laughs> my mind, done to like I'll give you the 30 second rundown. Lightning in a bottle of the big hippie fest, they call them the green team, and they instill a ton of pride. They, you gotta mm -hmm. find those people who are like, proud to make an impact, because it's a dirty job. Yeah. This year at Air Force, we're not doing anymore, but next year we're giving them specific shirts that are unique to the green team, and making them feel a sense of belonging, and showing them the value of what they're doing, because it's not a sexy volunteer role. No, for sure. <laughs> We have, we use um, a green team during the event, and then we have a post-race green team for specifically for the gel packets. Yeah. Um, our mission is to make it the best thing that we, yeah. that we can. So when we run in neighborhoods and bike paths, and so we won't get our permits. Um, you know, yeah. when you run through a marathon, you run through four different towns, and if you're littering in one town, the, the people on the town council won't need a permit. Yeah. So we, um, Give free race registration. That's what I was going to say. Increase the perks for that. And and so and they go out the next day with us, which is, it used to be my business partner myself. We'd go out with our bags and our gloves. We would walk 26 miles to find it. And um, it just became too much. So we have this post race green team, and they get, a, if they put in three or four hours, and then we divide up the course, so they each take like maybe three miles, and they will love it because it's a recovery run for them. Um, and we just assign them a different spot. We give them gloves, we give them bags, we drive around in our pickup trucks and we pick up all that stuff and we take it back to our warehouse and we have this the trash there. But it's been really, really great. We give them a great registration and they want it. So that's helped a lot post race. During the races, we usually use um, kids that have to do community service in their schools. Um, and that's what 
one minute over, but I was going to say a recent trend that's kind of cool is blogging. It's organizing, yeah, I'm very proud of people. I do this all the time in my area. I'm, and I hate living in the country. It made me realize that people drink and drive out there all the time. It's terrifying. It's all the kinds of beer balls. Every time I walk my dog, I bring a musical to and I take the trash with me. Um, but organizing blogging um, for like a longer race through and give benefits to the people. Runners want to be involved. Runners care. Um, you just, you gotta show them. Yeah. What, what they vlogged afterwards. It's incredible. Okay. Take pictures of that, and then we show it uh, at our uh, town council meetings. Yeah, love it. Thank y'all so much. I'm, I'm always available. Like I said, you can text me, call me, email me, follow me, Strava, and thank y'all. Thank you.